Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Turners Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for watching us today. Doing, a, doing one of my favorite things today. We're gonna let a, the Big Joe herd out into a new pasture where bison have never been before. It's what I call the halfway pasture. And uh, basically, it's, uh, it's some acreage uh, that, you that you drive through to get to the back of the property basically from the front. So we're up here at the front of the Ponderosa and we drive through it to get to uh, the backside of it, which you haven't seen very much of. And this is just one step further uh, to get to that back area. We've got some work to do. This is all part of Project 189. If you're confused and don't know what Project 189 is, I'll tell you about it. What I'm doing today is because we're getting some work done uh, at the Ponderosa, we're gonna build some new fence, which means we get to extend the bison further and further on this property. I'm gonna let the Big Joe herd out into this new pasture, uh, which is where we did the pond renovation. Very excited about getting them out on this new pasture. Anytime that you can extend out and put our bison on a pasture that they've never been before and we've never had bison on, I think it's awesome. Now, I say that there's probably been bison on this property, huh? You know, over a hundred years ago, they all roamed through here, right? Let's go. Uh, let's go find the big Joe herd. Uh, so yesterday, I came out here and I got the big joe herd to come out um yesterday oh i just spotted you guys remember the two calves that i just gate cut on my last video uh those two mamas that we separated from them i've let them come in and out of here uh, since i let the big joe herd out in pasture this is three and four the cows are up here in pasture one and they are able to still go up there and check on their calves that are in the weaning process this is the end of that process as far as the moms being able to go up there and check on them and smell them and see them. They've been going up there a whole bunch. So they'll come from pasture three and four and they'll go all the way up to pasture one and two. Uh, I see them kind of lingering towards me right now. So I got to make sure that they follow me and try to get them back with the, the Big Joe herd. So uh, Big Joe and them, there's only seven of them right now. And then I got to get these two mamas maybe to follow me and then uh then we'll rotate them in there so come on mamas let's go new pasture Got the gate shut so they're completely cut off from their calves that are up there at the barn so we need to get these mamas back with the uh, big joe herd so let's go uh let's go find the big joe herd come on mamas come on come on green area that's where we're headed we're gonna go in this pasture over here all 
All right, well, I had some other cows show up and uh, the big fellas here. Big Joe, what's up, Big Joe? Looking pretty right now, Big Joe. So pretty. You guys wanna go see some green grass? Come on, let's go, come on. I love, love doing that. It's one of my favorite things. And especially in a new pasture that they've never been before. That's that's the fun part about it is, you know that there were bison here over a hundred years ago. At one point before me, my parents, family, anybody was here, they were here roaming around this country, which is beautiful. But the great thing about it is we get to bring them back. <laughs> we get to bring them back. That's so fun because we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna keep expanding. Uh, we're halfway there is, is why I call it that. It's, and, it, and it is, it's halfway between uh, in our land, the way it's designed, the way it's laid out, this is halfway to the other half of it basically, which is all part of project 189. 189 means we have 189 acres. And the project is expanding the bison further and further. That is what the project basically is. What does that entail? It entails a lot of hard work, basically. It, it, it involves tearing out old fence. It, it involves a lot of this right here. With bison, you can get by, and this is what we do in our country. We do this right here on our land. We use barbed wire. And uh, you don't have to do the tall exotic game fences and all of that, but it starts with fencing. And sometimes you gotta rip out the old, which is what I'm doing. And then you gotta put in the new, right? And with that, you've gotta rip it out. You've got to, in this case, look at this. This is a prime example 
of what happens a lot of places. You've got a Eastern red cedar here, a juniper. And what this tree does is if you don't take care of your fence lines and you don't manicure them and take care of them, uh, you have a simple little saplings this tall grow up to be this and they're in your fence. Now, obviously this fence was way here before me, um, but, and now we're managing that today. So you have to go rip out that tree, push it all out. First of all, you've got to get the old fence out. That's the best way to do it is to rip out the old fence if you want to replace it. And then you got to push the trees and then you got to come back through and actually build a new fence. Now that is pricey and, and it can be very expensive. And that's why we're kind of uh, slowly getting there with project 189. And it's going to take us a while to replace a lot of this fencing. And uh, this one was okay. It's six strand. And, and then, uh, you know, sometimes the cedars create some sort of block. And um, to get them back here, it's fine. And I trust the Big Joe herd. I'm going to hang out with them for a little while, make sure that the, they're all doing good. With that being said, I, I trust the Big Joe herd because I'm comfortable with them. My yearlings, they're a little spicy. You know, they, they, they've got some spunk to them. So I didn't want to put them in here yet. I want to test it with Big Joe herd and make sure they were good because also if any of the bison got out it'd be the big joe herd that i'd want to and be able to get back in the yearlings they'll follow me around in the atv but i trust the big joe herd more than them right now but uh that'll grow on me and, and we'll figure that out with the yearlings in the future so just very exciting uh to do this part of project 29 we're halfway there and we're about to start some new work on the back side of this property you can kind of see some green over there on that hill that's the burn unit you've seen some of our land through the burn unit that we did if you haven't watched it we did a prescribed burn here and we burnt over 60 acres and so you can go back and watch it and you got to see that land and i've been giving you updates on it but you can see the green way over there on the hill eventually when we get that new fence done we will let the Big Joe herd out there and let them graze some of those winter grasses down that, that came up from the burn. So anyways, I'm going to hang out and watch these guys for a little bit. I'm going to go start tearing out some fence, give you an update on the burn unit and show you kind of how that's still looking today. And um, anyways, we'll go from there. All right, so we're up here on the hill. I'm talking about ripping out some fence uh, and then actually pushing some timber and then um, coming back through and building some new fence. This is it right here. So this is a prime example of kind of what shape this fence is in. And it's okay. This I think some of this land, according to the previous owner, has been here since the 50s. So uh, you can see what we're dealing with here. This is, a, this is not gonna keep bison in long term. Now, what would probably happen is the big joe herd and them they would be happy because this is the uh burn unit take a look at this it's awesome out here look at the difference in where we brush hogged and we started burning right there and we didn't burn here you can definitely see the line it's pretty cool right so i came through and i brush hogged this this was our fire break basically our fire line and then we lit right here sam shaw was helping me that day uh, with the whole fire crew prescribed burn crew uh he helped me and he was lighting on this side so the bison when they get over here eventually when we get them over here they're gonna stay busy and, and you can do this for a long time if you keep your bison happy you know i tell uh young producers or people that are interested in raising bison they always ask me what do you do with fencing and, and i always tell them simply keep them happy now that doesn't mean you go out and feed them every day you know, keep them happy give them what they want and that's grass you know hay give them some cubes every now and then you know and fresh water those three or four things you can keep your bison happy now you have to be careful where you get your bison from if you get them out on a thousand acres and you try to put them on five acres it could get a little hairy right so uh because those bison are, probably don't see people that often you see me with my bison daily right and so they're not on a thousand acres uh, but if they see you every day and they're used to you you can manage them with fences like this right there's one two three four five the six may be on the ground that's how bad this fence is but 
they don't have to go over there. That's our hay meadow, right? They don't have to go over there if they've got this here and they know that you give them cubes and, and all those things. So this is a beautiful site here. And in this, and, and it's only probably three or four inches tall in some places. But in the spring, that's what all this is for. We hope to see it all rise up and you're gonna see all that native growth come through in the spring. And by that time, hopefully, and then once we let it grow up, you know, April, May, June, sometime in there, once it gets up to a certain height, we can eventually keep the bison in here and now it becomes a rotational unit. This is an 80 acre pasture right here, all part of this burn unit. So that's the future, what's going on with Project 189. The bad thing about Oklahoma, you've got elm trees, hackberries, growing in these fence lines that nobody ever took care of. And this is where it all starts. You've got a one inch uh, diameter cedar here and then they grow to that eventually to you know something big like that one down there all right so if you take care of your fence lines you don't have to worry about this i'm going to start tearing out what i can some of that stuff is growing actually into the trees so i'm going to rip out what i can right here in these portions of it there's some sections and then he'll come through and push all this timber up and get rid of it there's these these are not good for anything okay this size of a cedar is not good for anything but this is a uh, what you'd be dealing with right look at all this growth in here that's from rubbing on that uh, barbed wire over and over eventually see it'll start growing into this All right, I've had enough of pulling fence out already. Still got a lot more work to do, of course, but no big deal. I'll get it knocked out. Now, I've been letting a big Joe herd and them uh, settle down in that uh, new pasture, so I'm gonna go check on them and then uh, see how they're doing. It's exciting to see them out here. It's a step closer, like I've been talking about. But um, I'm sure they're gonna hug this uh, <laughs> this uh, pond dam because uh, there's a lot of fresh growth there. We've got some rye and then some mixed kind of garden seeds on it. You can see I've been doing some burning right here. Still need to pile up and burn some more brush. You know, you know me, I love to burn. But <clears throat> it's fun to see these guys out here roaming around. And the first thing they always do is go check your perimeters to go check your fences especially the corners so uh, it looks like they're still doing that right now some of them are making their way up along that cedar fence line so got some exciting things coming uh gotta get some of that fence pulled out I'm gonna get it pushed and we're gonna build some new fence so just a little bit more just a little step here and there will get us where these bison can go all the way through our property as big joe's coming in here right now so um, but anyways, thank you guys for watching and, uh, thank you for being a part of this, letting, uh, guys like this, uh, out on the, out on the, some fresh grass. So he's going to chase me around his ATV. I think he still wants some cubes, but, um, anyways, I'm going to lead them in here for a while and, uh, let them have access. They've got water with the pond, some fresh water. And so, okay, big Joe, quit chasing me. I'm not so worried about them getting stuck now. Um, it has dried up some, uh, but also the calves aren't in here. So 
which is good and that's something i was worried about but not that the cat not that the cows can't get stuck because they can but i feel a little bit more comfortable about it now and i left it open so they could get access to uh pasture three and four which is where they've been and they can get uh other sources of water uh, from some other ponds there so thank you guys for watching keep ranching see you soon